The greatest threat that humanity faces is them. The powers that be. The overlords. They go by many names, but who are they? So many are quick to point fingers at fellow humans, and it's easy. Put a face to the name, and people begin to associate. But at the end of the day, even these humans are mere pawns. They are our brothers and sisters. Like, for me, it started with conspiracies. How could anyone do such things to X people? It's ridiculous at the end of the day because it's all distractions. What matters at the end of the day is that we are all souls in between mind and body, and as that which perceives both mind and body, it is our duty to dictate which thoughts get to become reality. And this goes so much deeper than any of us think. It is a spiritual war, and humans are just pawns in the war. If you can't comprehend it, then think of these things as children playing war with toys. That's all we are to these things, disposable pawns. Those fellow humans we point fingers at may not even be fully cognizant of what it is they're doing, in all honesty. And I'm under the assumption that a majority of humanity doesn't have a single clue what's going on here. The funny part is they all know exactly what's going on here. Whatever they choose to give themselves to through belief is a very real thing. They know where they are going at the very least. They know they have a choice. They know that they can make said choices, but... They don't tend to care about what's offering the choice, and most tend to align with the choices so much that they believe themselves to be the ones making the choices. It's an easy path, and the easy path is, well, easy. At the end of the day, we can't really judge anyone, and we can't really place blame. And if we are to place blame, then we should first place blame on ourselves. We consented, we perceived, we chose to experience. This whole game that we find ourselves in is a dangerous one. No mere human is our enemy at the end of the day. Even those who kill us are merely misguided souls listening to thoughts that they aligned with that don't have their best interests at heart. They just act out on the thoughts, you know? They're aligning and acting out on the thoughts. They don't realize that they're being manipulated, that they're being told to do the thing. They have been conditioned into believing that they are consciousness or that they are the vessel. And if they are the vessel, then thoughts come from within, so boom, they are their thoughts. And if they are their thoughts, then their thoughts create reality, their thoughts create their vessel, and so everything is an extension of themselves, and so boom, they just do the thing. So we cannot put any blame on them if they themselves cannot comprehend their existence as the construct of soul. At least as the construct of soul, we can see how all things done to us are mere illusions, attempting to sway us left and right via the construct of time. If something bad happens, then it's just the enemy attempting to get you to perpetuate the negativity and drag you down. If something good happens, it's just a reminder what lies outside of this construct of time. It's not the end goal in its entirety. If bad things can still happen, after all. I was getting a bit off topic, but... What matters here is that we are all souls in between mind and body first and foremost. We are not these physical bodies. We are not the thoughts we experience. We merely perceive both mind and body as that which lies in between. Switching over to simulation terms for a moment here. All of those atrocities committed throughout the world were not committed by the soul in question alone. They were guided to commit the act. The soul can be seen as a sort of automation system in between mind and body. It's supposed to act out on scripts or thoughts. Again, I said I'm working with the simulation perspective here. But the soul aligned with the thoughts being implanted and it acted out on the thoughts through the vessel. So the soul did commit those atrocities, but at the same time, they knew no better. Like everyone in existence that does bad in my opinion 
deserves a second chance, even the worst of us. And I know that may be hard to hear for some. It was hard for me to comprehend. But I'm beginning to let go. Like, what do I know, you know? Who am I? I've done some things. Who am I to judge other people? I could have been a horrible person, you know? I've experienced horrible thoughts. What if I had aligned with one of those thoughts instead of choosing to deny them? We all hold the potential for greatness and for horribleness, you know? We can be horrible people or we can be good people. Because delving deeper into the simulation aspect, we should just start letting go of everything because what if we do each have our own subjective realities? That would mean what if the person that harmed you isn't even there? What if something took over their vessel and the reality that you're perceiving and in their subjective reality, they're going through the same story you're going through but instead your roles are reversed and you're the one doing the harming instead? Should you be judged by the same standards you are now judging the other person by simply because one of their vessels across the multiverse committed a crime against you? I get that what we subjectively experience should matter most, but I think that the bigger picture has to mean something, you know? Like, look, you will hold grudges against people, right? But... What if you chose to let go instead? Just choose to live and let live. Just do your own thing, you know? Focus on you. You would get a completely different timeline than the realities where you chose to focus on that revenge or that anger, you know, where you fester in it, where you drowned in the deep. Like, again, with this bigger picture aspect and the whole simulation perspective, what if we aren't just fragmented across a singular 3D reality? What if this really is a multiverse and we are fragmented across all 3D realities in existence? What if we aren't here to help a universe but to help the whole multiverse? That would mean that the moments I am offered are being taken by a version of everyone who has ever existed. And those versions of us will slowly resonate back together one day. There is no rush when we have a whole construct of time to deal with after all. That would mean that we don't have to reach millions nor billions of people. We would only need to reach a few of them, and the domino effect would take care of the rest across the multiverse. We probably wouldn't even need to reach anyone and could subjectively make our way there to that objective reality, you know? But in that case, why not bring as much as we can on our journeys? So to sum it all up, stop worrying about enemy higher powers. If you can't focus on an allied higher power, then in all honesty, the only higher power you should be worrying about is yourself until you figure this whole thing out. Because, let's be real here, you're going to partition yourselves into the moments you want to experience regardless of if you see this video. You are the author and main character of your story. And if you saw this video, you just wrote me in for this part. <sighs> and if you wrote me in, then I guess our paths are intertwined and I can't wait to see what you do with your piece of the kingdom. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, I truly do believe that his sacrifice was a foolproof failsafe. And by this, I mean that his sacrifice literally purchased all of our souls from the slavery that we were once in. And sure, we can give ourselves back to that slavery, but when all is said and done, we are all going to be going to the same place. It's pretty ridiculous. Like, even the worst people in existence are going to find their way back to the Father of all creation. Now, the thing here is... Which judgment seat you get? Will you be getting the good judgment seat or the bad judgment seat? Because there's a good judgment seat where your acts, your good deeds, aren't like there to help you save yourself from damnation. Because a lot of people think good works are meant to save your soul, but your soul is already saved. You just got to accept that fact. 
what good works are for are for after the fact when you're outside of this construct of time what do you have outside of this construct of time what you do within will be rewarded outside <sighs> and it's just crazy that we're all taught so many things by so many different people and for the most part I'd have to say that it's all just manipulation tactics, you know? Because I truly do believe that the father of all creation really does love all of us. And I'm not even sure if I posted the video yet, but there's this belief that I have. Huh, it's not really even a belief, it's a knowledge. How you treat your children your relationship with your children and your relationship with your parents is a reflection of your relationship with the father of all creation. So I can't really say how it would go for your parents because my father wasn't around. But I can say that how you treat your children is how the father of creation will treat you. That is basically it. I hope you guys have a good one and... Number two, stay safe out there.